was so was this did someone take this picture or was this set no up i set it up on a tripod and i actually have the it's hard to see and i think maybe i photoshopped part of it out but i did have a i have a huge long bulb release um, oh, okay. <laughs> because you can you can buy a, a little bracket that goes on over the lens of the Holga that has um, the screw mount that you can screw in a, a bulb release for, and that's all. That's all me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it looks like you did Photoshop that out, but you can see your oh, hand on your address there. It looks like it's clasping sure. onto something. So that's okay. Great. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to point that out, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I just need to see your hand. There. And I wouldn't have thought sure. anything unless you told me I'm holding on to a bulb release. Sure, thing. sure, sure. So can I, tell me the story behind this photograph. Okay, so this is part of a series called Not Wonderland. And in fact, I worked on two series at the same time, Rabbit Holes and Revelations, which there is another photograph there from uh, the called The Philosopher of Me and, a, and, a, and an Older Man. Um, that was from Rabbit Holes and Revelations. And this is Not Wonderland. These two series were created uh, during a time I was uh, married, I was just about to get married to my first husband. Um, I had also lost a considerable amount of weight. All of my work um, uh, had, had stemmed from um, me needing to accept myself because I was always overweight and I needed to have, um, to build up my, my self-esteem because I had been abused my whole life because of my weight. And so I had um, a lot of transformations at the time happening. The, the weight loss, uh, about to marry my first husband, um, not feeling like I belonged in a specific place. I um, and while I lived in New York, as you can see in this picture, this is New York City, um, I never felt part of an urban environment and always felt like I belonged in some kind of a fairy tale. So the, these images were based on that. This one, hand in hand, um, my little nymph guy on the side is sort of my white rabbit uh, in the in Alice in Wonderland. So he had he was supposed to be my voice of reason and my my guide. So I took him around. Uh, there's a there's a few images of him in in the series that I, I've taken him around. He was he was great to work with. <laughs> There's no. a there's a common theme when I talk to photographers um, that photography for them has been some sort of and it has nothing to do with the name <laughs> of the podcast, but it's therapeutic for them. It's cathartic. It's a a process that and a, I guess it's a, a ritual or whatever it is for them that they're able to um, pro, I don't know project whatever turmoil is going on on the inside on, onto their work. Well, to be uh, in my in my case, and that's the reason why I reached out to you when you asked uh, for people to to interview, is that my work is directly therapy because mm -hmm. it all stemmed from me having the need to express myself to start the start the process of self acceptance. Um, I did portrait work prior to self portraits where I purposely sought out beautiful men and women to photograph, beautiful in the standard sense, in the ideal model sense. The reason I did it was in a strange way to possess their beauty because I felt like I wasn't beautiful, because I was told I wasn't beautiful my entire life. So, um, I, I so I would look for these women, especially, but and men too, to photograph for that reason. And when I would photograph them, I would say, "My God, you're beautiful." This is, you know, whatever. All these compliments I would give them, and immediately their response is, "Oh God, no! This is, look at my nose, look at my eyes, look at my, look at look at my body. That no, I'm not beautiful. I'm not." The, and I said, "How how are you saying that? Like I, I really didn't understand." how they were complaining about the way they looked when other people could see them as, as the, the ideal, what, what society says is beautiful. And that's what got me thinking. I said, you know, if they're, if these people are not happy with the way they look, then, then there's something else going on. There's something deeper going on than that, that our society is, is seeing people, you know, the judgments and, and whatnot. And so I then said, you know what, maybe, Maybe I'm not as ugly as I think I am. Maybe maybe there is something to me. If not, I need to do something anyway. So that's when I went from portraiture to self-portraiture. And my very first series in university, my thesis, was my very first 
really large color nude self portraits. And my professors at the time were extremely happy that I was doing this and they, they were really supportive of what I did. And that, that went on and on to, to go to, to become my, my career of doing self portraits. But it went from, I didn't want the work to constantly be focused on my body because I do know people that do that as well. And that's mm -hmm. fine, but I wanted, I wanted to evolve and go from, okay, I, I did all of this work that was focused on showing who I was and saying that I was beautiful to, okay, let's go deeper into the psychology. Let's go deeper into other themes that I want to focus on, like spirituality, um, you know, symbolism and, and some other things. And that's what I did in the 25 years that I've been doing this. Um.